Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of fantasy romance and romantic fantasy. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. Whew. That's so good. Today is Monday, April something, 11th, April 11th. And I'm back home. Glad that you all liked the uh, podcast with Dorinda last week. Um, she is adorable, isn't she? Even if she wouldn't do the chime dingling. So it's funny. <laughs> I opened up my laptop because I have to have it open to do the video portion of this podcast. And I couldn't figure out what was wrong with my screen that looked like maybe there was light shining on it funny, but there's not light shining on it funny. And it almost looks like one of those old photographs, like where you get damage around the edges. And so it's like bright in the middle. And then there's like a little halo around it and then dark at the edges. And I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with my screen? And then I remembered how quickly we forget. So on Saturday, when I was down in Portales at the Jack Williamson lectureship, Saturday morning, we did the workshop, uh, creative writing workshop. So Connie Willis led it guest of honor, Walter John Williams assisted. And then they had the rest of us guest authors, um, what essentially being the peanut gallery and chiming, chiming in. Um, and it was really fun because I'd asked originally, I'm like, is this something that we're supposed to go to? And they're like, well, we would really appreciate it if you would. And this is a terrific event because they they paid all my expenses. And you guys know how I feel about this. If you've been listening for a long time, they did it perfectly. Um, they paid for my hotel. They picked up all my meals. And it was, um, you know, treated me with respect, even though, you know, I wasn't as important as some of the other authors. They uh, acted like I was. And that's amazing. Anyway. So we did this creative writing workshop and we um, finished up, oh, like around 12, 1230. And Connie Willis said, well, we're all going to go out to lunch. And so do you want to come? I'm like, yes, even though I wasn't hungry because David Sweeten, Professor Sweeten, who is... Um, the one running the lectureship now down in Portales. It's at Eastern New Mexico University. Uh, he had made kolaches, homemade kolaches, where he had like set the dough to rise overnight. And and dear reader, I had two. <laughs> so hungry. I was unbelievably hungry and I had not had coffee. Um, so at this point for lunch, I was not hungry. This did not stop me from eating lunch, but I, uh, yeah. So somehow, so like, despite the inadvisability of this thing, you know, so like I'm walking around at the lectureship, you know, for a couple of days and I have my pink Fluvog laptop bag that I love very much, which is basically just a tote bag here. I'll show you. So see it's, um, if, if you're not on video, sorry, you get the same description. It's pink leather. It's got some embossing of flowers in the Fluvog style. And the best thing about this is that the rope handles go all the way underneath the bag so that the bottom doesn't tear out. And I bought this quite some years ago, five years ago, uh, when I was in Denver uh, at the store. Uh, because I wanted something that would work better to carry my laptop that I could also put all my shit in when I'm like at conferences. So I also had my wonderful thermos thing, which is in the kitchen. I won't go get it that David gave me, um, for Christmas, maybe doesn't matter. Uh, that's a coffee thing and a water thing. And it's really great because he did research. It's big. It's really tough. I've already dented it. It's still tough. And it's got, this is the first time I'd used it just for water. And it's got this screw on top with, um, oh, I don't know what you would call it. Like a really flexible thingy that goes around the straw. So I can, if I tip it over, it doesn't spill. However, this does not mean that water will not leak out. So I had, <laughs> you can see where we're going. So I had that 
in the laptop bag upright, you know, and I would stick it in there with my laptop and my other things. And really it worked fine. It was not a problem. And it, when I first did, I thought, oh, this is stupid. You know, it's like, you know how you do that? You're like, will I regret this? <laughs> but no, it was fine. Except when we went to lunch, I had put my laptop bag behind the seat of the car with my partially open bottle of wine. I made sure that didn't spill. But when I came out from lunch, somehow, probably when I was driving, the thermos thing, yeah, I know you're all cringing, had tipped over and there was like standing water in the bag of my wonder, bottom of my wonderful waterproof leather bag. And so I was like, oh fuck, I've ruined my laptop, right? So I spend a few minutes taking everything out, drying things off, dumping out the water. Uh, and I set the laptop up on end in the back seat of the car to dry out. And just in case, you know, and I was just like, sort of like sending a prayer to the tech gods that it would um, be okay, that it would not be ruined due to my moment of carelessness. You know, you kick yourself. <laughs> like, fuck. So I did not turn it on because that's one of the tricks, right? You know, it's like you have to resist turning it on um, until it dries out completely. So I, you know, brought it inside. I said, we have the radiant heat in the floors, which we'll be turning off soon. It's warming up. You know what? I'm still not outside yet, though. It's, um, it's 48. I could probably start. It's always rougher. I don't know. For some reason, I haven't wanted to this spring, have I? So I didn't turn on my laptop until, I don't know, like noon yesterday because I thought, okay, well, I'm going to give it a good 24 hours. And so I turned it on and did the cross fingers and prayers. And I had it hooked up to my big monitor and it came on. It came on just fine. And so I thought, hooray, hooray. But I did not open the laptop to see the screen until this morning when clearly I had already forgotten about the, uh, the incident. So I have a touch screen on this, which I'll be kind of bummed if that stops working. But it might be just because I had it closed up and now it will try further. The shape of the halo is changing. So maybe it'll, maybe it was just like, um, humidity. I don't know. I could have screwed this up. <sighs> Heavy sigh. So, um, that was a lot of talking about my laptop. I don't have much else to report. I did get, um, some words done while I was gone. I didn't get tons. But I did, um, after the podcast with, well, we could turn on some of these. All right, to turn on my progress count so I could see what I did. I mean, at least I kept it moving forward, which was my main goal. On Thursday before I left, I did get my 2,000 words that morning. Um, Friday, uh, actually before I went to Dorinda's, I was awake early in the hotel room, of course. And so I got... Um, 440 words before I went and recorded the podcast. And then after that, we didn't have a whole lot of time before we had to go to the first event. And then on um, Saturday morning, I got another 543 words. I don't typically work on Saturdays, but you know, I was trying to do a little catch up there. So um, <laughs> it's funny looking back and forth between the two screens, which, you know, I, I do, I, I probably shouldn't, but I can see things so much better on the big screen. But I, I look at the little screen and there's this whole weird watermark patina. I mean, literally a watermark, right? And then on the big screen, it's clear. And it's like, oh, but wait. <laughs> so um, it was really fun. It was super fun being at the lectureship. Um, I had met Connie Willis a few times before. I had attended a reading of hers forever ago when I lived in Laramie. She came up for that and um, she was just phenomenal. She was just delightful to be with. Um, 
I just, I can't speak highly enough. You know, and I talk about this sometimes, about the difference, um, you know, like some, I, I don't want to say older, um, although, you know, sometimes it can be an age thing, but authors who are farther along in their careers, you know, more advanced in their careers than, than you are, have can be very different in how they treat the younger writers. I'm putting that in air quotes. Um, you know, and writers are people, right? People are people and people will people, um, you know, and some writers who are like guest of honor at something like that. Um, Connie was being master of ceremonies, I think. And she was longtime friends with Jack Williamson, the science fiction writer who got his bachelor's and master's at Eastern New Mexico University and who was a professor there for a very long time. And she would go every year for the lectureship. And now that he has passed on, she still goes. And she was really happy they'd missed it, the in-person part, for the last two years, of course. So this was the first time back in person. And everybody was just so happy to be back together in person. But Connie it was just incredibly generous. She really made a point of being kind, not just to me, but like to another guest writer who only has a, has a couple of books so far and was not sitting in the very front row peanut gallery for the creative writing workshop, but he was sitting more towards the back, being a little more retiring. And he had said to me that he felt like he didn't have as much to say as some of the authors, which that can be a thing when you're newbie. And Connie would really make a point of saying, do you have something to add, you know, and what do you think about this? Uh, she's, it, it takes a real generosity of spirit to be that good to writers. And, and she was kind to me in ways that I particularly noticed when I was talking about like some of the stuff with romance. And, and she took a moment to explain how, you know, like the genres are about romance and, you know, she was saying, you guys have to understand that for a long time, science fiction was like near the bottom. They weren't nearly as good as literary fiction. And then they found out they could look down on fantasy. And then fantasy um, and science fiction both figured out that they could look down on the graphic novelist, the comics writer. She said, until all of a sudden, probably Neil Gaiman's fault, it the graphic novels ascended and, and went up much higher. But then they figured out, oh, they could look down on romance. Um, it's just really good to have somebody who is being warm and supportive and welcoming that way, as opposed to those who look down their noses and try to make sure that you know that you're not nearly as good as they are and never will be, uh, which, you know, happens. There are certainly writers that I've encountered like that. Um, in fact, it's funny. I'm trying to decide if I should say this. I'm going to pause while I think about, should I say this? Yeah, I don't think it's going to hurt anything for me to say this uh, because I'm not going to give details. But there's one writer who, like from the beginning of my career, when we were first like at uh, on panels together and that kind of thing, was terribly unkind to me. I mean, nasty to me on panels, silence me, silencing me on panels. Um, someone much, much more advanced in their career than I am. Uh, to the point where like people were coming up to me after the panel saying, what is their beef with you? And I'd be like, I do not know. This person like hated me on site. Well, when I was looking at being president now, Madam President, uh, looking at the list of people that could be named Grand Master, I saw this person's name on the list and I thought, ha, <laughs> won't be naming you a grandmaster anytime soon or ever, ever, you know, maybe a different president would, but it was to me both a moment of probably, uh, what's the word I want? Unflattering. It's not my finest moment people. Uh, but I did feel a nice little moment of vicious glee over that. Like can't stop you being mean to me, but, uh, and then it's also, I thought, stow this memory away, Jeffy, because it's really important to remember um, 
that the newbie writers that you may sneer at today, not that I would sneer, I try very hard not to, but you know, you never know who, who they're going to be in one year or 10 years or 20 years. And maybe someday that person will be the one looking at your name on the list and deciding whether or not you should have a career achievement award. Um, it's worth keeping in mind, right? You know, they, they say that you should be careful of being kind to those that you meet on the way up because you'll meet them again on the way back down. I think that implies a certain linearity that does not exist because it's more like all of us are bouncing up and down and up and down. Uh, but, um, yeah, Connie was just fabulous. And she even took a moment to say to everyone that I have like the worst job in the world being president of Sephora and that everyone should appreciate that. And the other thing she did that, and I told this to David and he didn't think I was quite, it was quite so funny, but she has the quickest wit. She is just tremendously witty. And um, she had back surgery last year. Um, she was She's your age, mom, uh, uh, and born in Denver, born in Denver in 1945. And she um, had back surgery. So she has one of those walkers, you know, she doesn't have to use it all the time, but she has it with her. And then it has like one of those seats in it so that you could turn around and sit on it. And so we were all done on um, Friday evening with all of the panels and walking out and we were you know, I was coming out with my little group and I saw Connie sitting there on her little walker chair at the edge of the parking lot because her husband had gone on to get the car, you know, to save her more of a walk. But I yelled out, abandoned in the parking lot. And she looked at me and she goes, seduced and abandoned in the parking lot. <laughs> and I don't know, it, it really made me laugh. And it was just, um, it just felt like such a warm and delightful community. We just had, um, I had a fabulous time. I hope everyone had a fabulous time. Yeah, so I think I'll leave it there. Uh, I need to kind of get back on my stick this week. And I have finished reading um, through The Sorceress Queen and The Pirate Rogue. Gosh, I love that book. <laughs> I really enjoyed that book. The scene in the carriage is so freaking hot. Uh, maybe I shouldn't say that about something that I wrote, but I really enjoyed it. And I've started in on Dragon's Daughter. And good news is, is I have little sticky notes, things about that I'm understanding about Ryan and Selena. So getting it all figured out, I hope. So on that note, I'm going to sign off. I hope you all have a wonderful Monday that it kicks off the week well. And I will talk to you all tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.